Hello, I'm Biman and this is Immersive Base Building Guide Part 2. In this episode I'm going to add thralls and pets to our base. To accommodate all the new people I'm going to build a servant's quarters in the form of a small house attached to the base of the tower for direct access to the kitchen and workshop, and two fortified gates which will include barracks for the guards. In the upcoming parts I will turn this into max level build, add mods and show you how you can use the design in different ways, so hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss it. Let's start with the servant's house. I am going to leave some space between the house and the tower to make the building look detached and conceal the door linking the two. Also, all the little nooks and crannies make building more interesting and can be decorated with some clutter later. As always, I try to avoid building simple primitive geometric shapes. Connecting the house to the tower in this way also works well with the previously established privacy rule. The main entrance is now reserved for the owner and guests, while servants and artisans can come and go as they please through the kitchen door and never bother the tower occupants. I know they don't really do that in game, but it's about creating the illusion. I decided to use sloped roof for this one. When designing a base with multiple buildings, this can serve two purposes. First, makes the buildings more varied. Second, it changes the feel of the structure. Sloped roof, at least for me, conjures an image of a nice cozy home, while flat roof with fence around looks way more defensible and has military feel to it. On the other hand, if you want your base to look realistic, you might also consider the climate. If you search for different styles of houses, you might notice that wherever rain or snow is expected, people tend to build sloped roofs, and in dry places, like Middle East for example, flat roofs are more common and are actually used as an extra room for various purposes. Placing sloped roofs can sometimes be tricky. Always use the rule I mentioned in part 1 of this tutorial. Look at the floor and use it as your guide. Regular and corner pieces will cover square tile, while wedges, both normal and inverted, cover the triangle. The pillars always snap to the center of the tile below or above, with one exception, stairs. So I'm temporarily placing stairs to have off-center columns. This is a bit buggy and sometimes the columns will disappear on reload. But for the sake of the tutorial I'm going to do that anyway. Maybe you'll find some use for this trick in your own designs someday. Or maybe they'll get fixed. Placing walls on the foundations creates small overhang. I like to cover it up by placing fence foundations below the walls. Currently there isn't a triangle rooftop piece, so I'm just going to use square one. It will stick out a bit, but fixing this would require making a new model and inserting it into the game via mod. And Blender and mod creation are a wee bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I'm just gonna compromise and use the square one. Also, I'm going to extend the roof to provide some shade for the guards patrolling the wall, and to make the structure more complicated and therefore nicer to look at. When placing doors on the wedge tiles, always make sure that the open door doesn't block your way. To change where hinges are, use mouse wheel to rotate the door once it's snapped to the frame but before clicking to place it. Hmm. 
Let's move on to the gatehouses. The first one will include two rooms, to serve as barracks and quarters for the captain of the guard. For the outer wall I'm going to use foundations to make them look more sturdy. There are some ugly gaps between the door frame and the foundations. This can be fixed by snapping any wall to the door frame. The sloping walls outside should do the trick. A line made of square foundations is wider than one made of wedges, so I'm using square pieces and stairs to place the columns first, then use wedge tiles to make the floor and balcony. Since these columns are directly connected to the ground, it is very unlikely that they will disappear.
For this gate I'm going to arrange the outside walls to create a funnel of sorts. The basic principle of designing a gatehouse is to restrict access to the gate itself, limit the space available for attackers while providing cover for the defenders. So if you look up historical examples of castles and forts, you'll often find towers protruding from the walls on either side of the gate, a special structure called barbican, or even double gate designs. Of course, for our tower, we're going to scale the design down a lot. I might do a guide on full-size castles later. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. I'm going to put columns on either side of the stairs. This is only for demonstration purposes, since they probably disappear on reload. The columns placed in this way get support from ceiling tiles above, so to place them in this arrangement the tiles next to the stairs have to be used. There is probably a bug in the algorithm that game uses to load structures where it places the pieces from bottom up and since the columns need the tile above they are removed due to lack of support. But this technique is still useful, especially for decorating the outside. If you can extend the pillar to reach the ground, then it will be self-supporting and should always load properly. Experiment and have fun in solo admin mode to find what works for your build.
I chose to use wall brazers to light the gates, then put some bracketed and protected torches along the walls. I've placed horns on top of both gates, so anyone standing there can alert the whole base to the incoming danger. A shade cloth and table with something to drink fits the roof of Captain's quarters nicely. It breaks the monotone silhouette of the building, adds some color and makes sense. The guards can escape the desert sun and have a drink now. Breaking thralls is very time consuming, so if leveled up enough upgrade the Wheel of Pain or place more of the basic ones. A thrall pot and feed boxes are also necessary at this point to feed our guards and pets. I'm not going to go into details about this here. If you don't know how to capture thralls and animals let me know in the comments and I'll make a separate guide about the gameplay aspects of those systems. I've filled the pen with some animals and I'm also going to place a couple of camels outside and a pet hyena to guard the tower entrance. Time to decorate the interiors. The key concept to keep in mind is that creating a settlement of any kind means also creating a community, and the most important thing about a community is the inequality of its members. You have to consider things like available space, privacy, quality of furnishings, availability of daylight or fresh air, a commodity, and distribute them among the members of the community according to a hierarchy. So a lowly slave may toil in the mines never seeing light of day, and sleep on the ground. Soldiers live in crowded barracks, while captain of the guard may have a spacious quarters, and in the case of our base, Lord, the player, has multiple rooms in the tower for his personal use. Even at low level the quality of the interior can change a lot. Bare floor and simple beds for workers, slightly better ones for soldiers, while officers can have carpets decorating the floors and comfortable beds. The hierarchy of the inhabitants is literally visible in this base. Craftsmen and troops live on the ground floors, captain of the guard above them, while player looks over the whole base from the top of the tower. Sure, it would be great if everyone had a nice place to live, but this is immersive, not utopian base building. And the sad truth is, some people have wealth and power, some do not. Now that building and decorating is done, all that's left is to place trolls around the base. This can be done in multiple ways. 
To achieve a highly disciplined and militaristic look, you might place soldiers at regular intervals on the walls. Put small groups here and there to achieve the opposite, or anything in between. Another thing you can do to enhance your base looks is equipping your thralls with armor. This ties nicely to the inequality principle. Any kind of military will have a structure, a hierarchy, so you might want to reserve a heavy and decorated armor for officers only, or you can divide your guards into regiments with unique look. There are many possibilities, so experiment and find what works for you. Since this is meant to be a low level base, I am going to use the three armor sets unlocked with the armorer fit. Captain of the guard will wear heavy, fighters medium and archers light. Thank you for watching part 2 of the tutorial. In the next episode I am going to use all available objects and mods to give the base its final look. Hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss it.